Hello, thank you so much for watching. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since we've done a drawing tutorial and today we're going with Kandinsky, Russian artist. You know, I went online to research him because I don't know much about him and I watched the documentary and it was so boring and then I tried to watch something else and it was just as boring so it's really upsetting that documentaries about art are so boring and mundane and art to me is the opposite it's exciting it's thrilling it's it gets me going is I'm always enthused about it and it's a shame that when people make documentaries about artists they're so boring so I give up I couldn't watch, so I don't know much about him other than what I googled. And Kandinsky was born in Russia on December, December 16, 1866, and he died on December 13, 1944. He was 77 years old, and he's considered to be one of the creators of abstract art. He was born into a wealthy family, he was a law professor, he was married to Anna, he always wore a suit, was always very dapper. He painted in a suit. He was inspired by the French Impressionist, specifically Claude Monet. And when he heard music, he saw colors. So a lot of his paintings are titled Compositions and then followed by a number. And today we're going to draw yellow, red, blue painted in 1925, which I have it right here. You know, and I've thought about doing Kandinsky for a while, but just the complexity of his paintings kind of like kept me away from them. But then when I started really analyzing his work, it's really just line and shape, and it's basics lines and shape. They're just repeated. So I am no longer afraid of attempting a Kandinsky work. I feel like I've done stuff that's super more technical and more difficult than Kandinsky, like Gustav Klimt or Kahlo or things like that. Dali. So this should be fun, easy, and not very difficult. So obviously mine's going to look different because I'm tracing everything in black. His shapes were not traced in black, so there's going to be a difference. But you know, you should always make it your own. So grab your pencil, I'll grab a sharpie. And I've already made some preliminary lines, just so I know what I'm doing. And we're going to start by making a circle. It goes like this. Which if you turn this upside down, I feel like this looks like a cat. I don't know if that was an intention. So we're going to make a circle on the right side of the paper. If you don't know how to draw a straight circle, grab like a lid or something. This is like a Tupperware lid. And then trace it. So. That's not a very <laughs> good circle, but it's okay. See, I don't know where to start. There's just so much going on. Ah, where do I start? Okay, there's like this leaf-like shape. No, what do I do? I'll do the squiggly line. So. So it's just a squiggly line. So if we're just referencing Kandinsky, so it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but just, I mean, try it as best as you can. So it has goes up once, twice, and three times, and then out. And then we're just gonna duplicate the line. And then this goes up. So it technically would be like this, but I run out of space. And then right here, there's another circle. Oops, that's really crooked. And then right here, there's another one. So now we're going to do somewhat of a letter F. Like if we were to do a, an F in bubble letters, but it's behind the squiggly. I'm 
No, not like an F, because it's an F. You know what? I don't even know how to explain this shape. Okay, maybe this is like an M or a comb. It's almost looks like a comb, right? Or a leaf. I don't know what shape this is, but it goes there. And then there's another one right on top of it. It almost looks like a wrench, I feel like. And then there is a kite. Or, ugh. okay, so this shape kind of goes over here, but it's, ah, uh, I don't know how to explain this. Okay. Okay. I think we'll just do the easiest thing. There's one, two, three, four triangles here. The second triangle, half of it's inside the circle and half of it's outside. And then this next one's going to be a lot bigger. And then the final one is also a lot bigger. Or a zigzag. And then you're going to connect these. But this is a thick line, so... There we go. So right below here is a rectangle. And it's not a straight rectangle. It's more like a... I don't know what this is called. But it doesn't have to be straight. And inside of it are four lines. Four, or one, two, three lines that go up and down, and then four that go horizontal. There's a circle right here. There's two lines here, and then three that go this way. And then there's four horizontal here. Oof, that was easy. There is a line that goes from here, straight up. Kind of like, like a flagpole, and then it has three lines. So now we're going to do this shape again, but facing that way. So we'll start with the tail. It's almost like a M or like a fish's mouth. Then go up. It doesn't go through here, so make sure you don't. It doesn't go through the triangle. There's a line here. And you come across, and then at this point you're going to make a rectangle. Okay, but then you're going to bring this down, and then come back up to make another triangle. And then you connect it to here. So it's another, it's like two triangles, one here and then one there. And then from here, you're going to come to this line over here. So then that creates two more shapes there. And here you come up to create another triangle. You're going to bring this line up, I mean through this, then down to make a square. And then right here is like a kite shape. And then a square in here.
So basically just make squares and triangles if you're a little lost. There's another one here of these, but I'm gonna leave it out because I don't like it on here. So then there's a rectangle here. And then there's another rectangle here. And there's another smaller one of these in here, but I'm gonna leave it out. I think it's too much and it's distracting for me in this composition. All right, so there's another circle here. And then there's a giant rectangle here. On top of this, or through this, well, there's a circle right here. And then around the circle is another rectangle that comes down below this one a little bit. And then right here is a parentheses with six lines. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and then right here is a line that cuts to that rectangle. And then through this line is a half circle. And then there's another line here. And there's four half circles on this one. One, two, three, and four. So right here, this line comes out a little bit like that. And then there's another one directly below it. And then there's two more thinner ones down here. One, two. And then there's like stairs right here. here and then two underneath it and then here's a two circles one inside the other and there's a triangle right here there's three lines, and then a square, and a square inside the square, partially inside the square. Here's a horizontal line. Here's another parentheses. Oops, I ran out of paper. And then on this line is a square. And then on top of it is another square. And then here's another rectangle. Rectangle, square, whatever comes out. Then I'm right here, here, and here. There's a line that goes up from this top square. There's three parentheses here. One, two, three, five lines here, one, two, three, four, five, and then there's a half circle that comes from the top of this rectangle all the way up. There's a rectangle here, and there's an L for love, and that's it. So if you got lost, you know, you can always slow me down, pause it, or rewatch it, or just add your own lines. It really doesn't matter. Make it your own. So now I'm going to start with yellow. I think I'm going to make a first coat of yellow, maybe not throughout, because I don't want when I add blue for it to turn green. But I'm going to start with this light wash of acrylic yellow.
and the wash is just watered down acrylic paint. And then once I do that, I'll be back. So I added the yellow. I went darker than I thought I was, but I'm not hating it. So once this dries, I'm going to go in with a, a teal or a light turquoise. But once it dries, because I don't want the colors mixing. So I added some really light turquoise. And once that dries, I'll add, I think, blue. I had to put that clip on top because it's the tape's not holding up. So don't buy the purple one. But I did tape this like two weeks ago. <laughs> So had I started painting it, painting it when I taped it, it probably would have lasted longer. All right, so I did some purple, and now I'm gonna lay it flat because the paper's falling because of all the water. And then I'll start with the blues. So I've added some purple, different shades of purple, and now I'm gonna go in with the like a red purple. So the shades I've created, I'm just gonna add a little bit of red to them, some pinks, some blues, and then we'll see what happens. Now I started bringing in some reds, so it's starting to take shape. So I added some blue, a darker and a lighter version. So it's almost done. I think I need to add some white, some peach, maybe some more turquoise, a lighter yellow. So this is where I'm currently at. I think I'm getting close to finish. Obviously it's going to look a lot different because of the black sharpie. I can't hide it, you know, I have to re- trace those lines with black paint to make it work getting closer I'm starting to like it a little bit better now I really like how the black makes everything just look much better I am finally finally done so, so I'm done I mean I took a lot of creative liberties now that I look at it but I think that's the deal you know to make it your own let me put the original up so you can see what it, what the original one looked like, the yellow, red, blue painted in 1925. I feel like my shirt is very condensed -ski. It used to be white, but obviously I don't know how to do laundry and now it's like pinkish. But I thought it fit. So as you know, my favorite part is t t removing these tapes. Because I love how crisp the line is once you do it. But... This tape didn't stick very long. It also took me a long time to finish this because I wasn't I wasn't feeling inspired. So the line is not as crisp but it bleeds a little but I you know I'm I kinda like it. completely dry in some areas. Normally I would put it in this frame but the last time I did that I sliced my finger and I really don't want to do that again so I'm not gonna put it in a frame and I'm also not gonna sign it because once it is framed I feel like people could you know rotate it and put it different ways depending on how it made sense in their space or even just to get a different feel for it so if you sign it in the front, then you no longer have that ability. Because then people will be able to say, hey, this doesn't go that way. So I I will sign this on the back just so people, if it ever goes somewhere, other than being in storage, they could do that. It took me a long time to paint it. I don't know if, if it's because I wasn't enjoying the process or because I wasn't feeling inspired. You know, kind of like in a one of those odd moods. So I'll have to do something more abstract again just to see if it's okay I really don't enjoy this type of art or if it's just really the mood I was in. Well anyway let me know what you thought about it. Leave in your comments what I should do next or what artist I should do next. Please make sure to subscribe, activate those notifications, click on the bell, and follow me on the Instagram. I'll leave that down here so you can see it and watch all the other content in my channel and that's it for today's video until next time adios y bye uh, i'm gonna pick up this tape